Hey, good morning, everyone. My name is Chris Bad Cowie. I'm the founder of Empowered for X and the host of BizGrams. I have the privilege of interviewing dynamic entrepreneurs, an opportunity for them to come and share their stories and the impact that they're making in the community. I am so excited today because we have Philistinia, uh, the founder of Agatha Resource Center. And how are you doing this morning? Thank you so much for being here with us today. I'm doing well, thank you. I'm looking forward to it as well. Um, but before we begin, um, I just want to acknowledge um, the land where we sit and just to give honor and stewardship to, to the past, present and future, Huron Winded, Iroquois Houdan, Ashinabak, and the Mississauga Credit First Nation who welcome us to their land. So, and and for this reason, we embrace um, in harmony. So I always like to have that connection um, because we are so we're intertwined and we're connected all by this um, this thread. So for that, I give thanks and you know, and hopefully we can live in harmony. Hey, I, I give thanks as well, and you know I I honor you as well for bringing that to our space. I think it is such a, a, a great um, omen or a, an opportunity for us to pay, be mindful of, you know, where we're currently sitting and working and the blessings that we have in this space and to acknowledge those who have come be gone before us and those who are here and those that are yet to come. So uh, thank you so much uh, for listening here for sharing that with us today. So tell us a little bit about your entrepreneurial journey. When did you uh, first begin? Mm. Um, my journey um, starts at eight years old, the age of eight. And um, because growing up and seeing how um, just uh, the, the mental illness that um, existed, it's especially in my family, and I, it, it just triggers something in me to want to get to the bottom of it. I want to know what it is, what it ha why it happened, and and why the other, the big aspect of it, you know. So from that age, I always say that I want to do. Um, I, I want to mentor. I didn't know it was it was called mentor then, but I wanted to do something that to help people or anyone who have this thing, but I didn't know what to, um, the proper name of it was because with the Caribbean where I came from, we, we, we hear like a different terminology of it. Like, yeah, the person is mad, the person is cursed, the person is possessed and so forth. But I always, um, from that age, I always look at it from a different aspect. So it has begun, it has begun from that age, to be honest. And then I dive, as I got older and, and came into being, I, um, I diverted a bit because it's like, oh, okay. I need a, I need a change and I just, you know, I don't want to do the mind anymore. And I diverted to, and I started looking into business and I work in places like in the army for a couple of years. And from there on, I just, and then I saw it there too, you know? Mm -hmm. And so I couldn't escape it, you know? And so because of that now, I decided that when I went back to, when I went, decided to go back to college, I decided to not to go into particular social work because I, I check it out, they weren't doing social work then. I mean, mental health then, it, you know, they weren't doing anything about mental health. Yeah, but um, so, after dabbling in that for a couple of months, I wasn't feeling fulfilled. And I wanted to definitely go back to that eight-year-old who decided that, you know, I want to know why, what caused that to happen. Why, why, are we, why are some people behavior so differently from others? 
and then I came across developmental, which is now the behavioral science. And um, so I decided I felt at home. I felt at peace. I felt okay. This is what I. This is where I'm, I uh, I belong. And I started my journey. I started studying. I started actually studying, and and I found out so many things. I, you know, I found out so many things, heartbreaking things as well. And it was like, okay, so how are we going to make a change? I never look at how I am going to do it because I don't think of I in the sense like that. I think about how are we as society going mm. to do it, right? And then I had some professors at the time who they didn't want me to work per se in the community, they want me to work as a teacher. So in the school system, so I started from out in the, I started in the school system and then I eventually, through the years, because I'm just cutting through, you know, I can't do chrono chronologically, but three years, I just um, went to the, the post-secondary system and I spent 15 years there. And everything was pertaining to social work um, developmental and cognitive studies. And that is where I was for the for 15 years, pushing out my knowledge, you know, pushing that knowledge on to the students. So that way, when they started on their journey, their professional journey, then they know how to provide the support and the care that um, are so needed for, for people who are un undergoing or experiencing mental distress. Hey, such a powerful story. And I love that eight-year-old girl, so inquisitive and curious about what the world has to offer and wanting to make a difference at that point for the we uh, instead of it's just for I, I love what you talked about it's not just I or me um, but it's looking at what what could the societal change what could the you know at that time you're probably looking at your family your community that you're within and you're saying how can I help we the we the family right and yeah, so yeah. I think that is such a wonderful thing so speak to us a little bit about how you know, that, that passion and desire to wanting to help in, in with behavioral mental health, how is that translated into your organization that you're currently building at the moment? Okay, so with Agatha, um, what we do, we provide um, everything, all, all, the, all the programs are etched on learning because coming from a learning background as well, I believe that we need to understand what, what is mental health. And um, I've done my research because I mean, coming from a background also to that where research is like um, fundamentals, I've done my research and have done the quantitative, I've done the qualitative, I've done um, just the, the episodal aspect of it and looking at, looking at it from a point of view where we're not touching on mental health. We are not. And we are, what we're doing instead, we are pushing treatment that does not equate to what the person is going through. Mm -hmm. Because for anybody to understand why they, why, why they are behaving this way, no matter what, they need to have the understanding of what it is that they're, that's troubling them. You know, and you can't give somebody, say to somebody, oh, because you're feeling down today because of the weather and stuff. I understand seasonal affective um, disorder. Yes, I know it is a real thing, but why is it happening, right? What caused it to happen? What triggers that part of the brain or, you know, uh, to, to allow that, to make that happen? So we, so having, being providing, having the tools, the knowledge to, to make somebody, to bring understanding to, to a distressed situation, you know, that's the key right there. And then from there on, they can say to the person, okay, now, is it overwhelming? You can start working with the person to say, if it's overwhelming and if it's troubling you, and, you know, let's take this option. 
This is where the treatment should come in. But I believe that we need to, to make sure that the knowledge of understanding is there to what is mental health. A lot of people just saying the word mental health, mental health, treatment, treatment, treating, and the they're working for the drug company. Sorry, I told you I'm gonna step on feet. And, um, you know, so and by pushing all these drugs on people and the person is getting worse than getting better. We are in, we are supposed to bring the tools and teach tools that will help the person to be better. If we want to meet people where they are, and I always believe that we, when we're in service, we are supposed to meet people where they are or meet the person where they are, right? Understand what they're going through. And from there on, help them to put plan or purpose in place to better them. I believe with everything, every fiber, given a chance or given the opportunity to understand or gain awareness is, is, is helping that person to, to uncover or discover a whole plethora of who he is or who she is. Hey, that is so wonderful. Uh, and I mean, it's definitely a different approach to truly educating the person that, you know, is going through maybe a, a season or a period, a lifetime of, you know, potential distress in that way and being able to help them. So how do you define mental health? Mental health is having a sound, like a sound bearing of, um, having a sound bearing of what you are today or what is my day looks like today, right? So having that wellness understanding or that self wellness understanding of who I am today, regardless of what the weather is like out there, but having like who I am today, how am I feeling today? It's, it's getting up every morning or every day and checking who you are. How am I doing? Hmm, right? And get and go in. I always say, go in, go in there, go in there to figure out what's your mental health is today. It's not just the absence of being of awareness or the absence of not feeling good or whatever, but it more it is more than that, you know. So that's what mental health is. And but if you ask um, a lot of people what their mental health is, they won't know, they won't tell you because a lot of us, we don't really, a lot of people in, in our community, they don't really stop to think about mental health or what their mental health should be, you know? So that's what it is. It's, 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 it's a simple thing. It's a simple thing. It's like, it's, it's how we, it's how, it's how we frame, it's how we frame our, our day. It's how we, um, we, we decided that, you know what, I'm going to make this day be productive and be fruitful, despite obstacles that I might come across.